Okay, so what we're going to do today is going to uh, create a part in your uh, CAD, whatever that may be. I'm going to go ahead and open up the CAD file right here. Then we're going to uh, export it as a DXF into SheetCam, and then we'll quickly put the toolpath on that and export it to the cut side, which will be this Mach 3 right here. So uh, let me show you how to do this. So let's just say we're going to do a square that is going to be 10 inches by 10 inches. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put that right there because I'm going to put a uh, hole in the middle of it. And let's just say that's going to be a 3 inch hole. So our radius is 1.5. Okay. Pretty simple deal. Stick it right there. Now, uh, if you want in this, most people have their own CAD, but if you're doing this CAD, you can you can uh, transform this, this outside of this. You just hit transform, round corners, okay, and then you just bump that to uh, whatever radius, and we'll just apply that and close. So, uh, that looks good. So, we're going to export this file right here, and it'll be as a DXF, and I'm just going to do it as a drop. That's, as I explained in my previous video, that anything that we do, just random parts or anything, we always export them as a drop and cut them on a drop sheet. So, uh, so I'm going to save that, and it already exists, and yeah, I want to replace it. And I actually have that to where that is right here on your DXF. So, if you click on this, you're going to see there's drop. And then I also do the tab files into this as well. So, so what we're going to do here is uh, so now that we've exported that file it's in this folder so let's go ahead and open up sheet cam and uh, sheet cam pretty straightforward no we don't want to do an automatic so let's say our, uh, our uh, options on our job options we're gonna do just a 24 24 enter enter right there okay looks great now we're gonna import our part so it's like in the previous video new part yep and it's gonna pull that up just give it one second okay there's our drop open I'm gonna import it in on this corner right here and it is an inch let's say okay so there's our part and we're not gonna mess with any contours or anything let's just say this is a 12 gauge part so uh, we're going to simply put a uh, put a toolpath on it and uh, select your default layer. And I said on the, in the previous video that sometimes they import as zero or two, but that's just your base layer. So uh, say it's quarter inch at 95, and uh, you can override that if you want. If uh, 95 is set up in the tool, I think 95 may be a little too fast. We'll go 85. Uh, so and then we've got our point two lead in and I don't have a lead out set up on this we can just arc that lead out at point two as well okay so what that did on this part was we're gonna have a lead in and lead out and I'm actually gonna take that off because I don't like lead outs really okay so there's our part we've got our lead ins lead outs so uh, we're gonna go to the nest side of it and uh, I'm just gonna hit I'm just going to click on it, hit C, and I'm not going to get too crazy with it. C and C. All right, and uh, just take these and kind of bump them, get them even. And that is where your bump increments come in at. It's how far you actually bump your part when you hit the arrow key. So uh, that looks all good. So I'm going to say we are great. We're good to go on that. We like it and we're gonna post process it and I'm gonna save it as drop and just hit save and uh, no I'm gonna hit no on that for I'm gonna show you this right here make sure this is always on G code tap so uh, save it I'm gonna replace it and then you should get this at the end of one you just look down here if it says it's completed with no errors you're great so okay so uh, let's open up here on the Mach 3 side 
Okay, this is what your general screen, screen is going to look like. And I will do a video after this on your initial setup as far as when you start turn, turning off and turning on the machine. Um, so if you turn it off on how to uh, home it and get it all set up. But uh, I've already done that. So uh, the machine is ready. It's, uh, it's ready to cut more or less. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to load this G-code here. And all you're going to do is load it and uh, drop tap open it and then you see that right there instantly so uh, all you have to do is jog to whatever corner that's on and uh, and uh, you're you're good to go that's it's really as simple as that on the other side of this I'll go through this screen a little bit on there for you here's your reference all home and uh, what that means is that uh, you have two sets of coordinates. One set of coordinates is actually for your machine and then the other one is uh, and the machine is actually where the machine is so I'm actually I'm gonna jog this up and you can see that moving back and forth and uh, what I'll do on this I've got something okay um, okay what I'm gonna do on this is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let's just uh, like I was saying on the machine coordinates, that is actually where your machine is on the table. So you have two sets, so that's what that red LED is on there. So whenever you click on that, this goes to your sheet. And you can see, you can kind of see where we're at as far as that goes. I'll, I'll uh, see we're on negative 17 right now, which isn't, it's not really, it's not really true. But, uh, so what we're going to do, let's, uh, let's say that this thing is sitting on there sideways and let's for the sake of it let's say we we just jogged it to this position and uh, you can see on the machine coordinates we're seven inches up but on this it gets a little weird sometimes because you're jogging so much so on this side of it you never want to zero all here actually I don't even think it'll let you zero this all this is you'll never be working with this red LED on whenever you have sheets up here and you're cutting them out you never want to be in machine coordinates so we're gonna click off of that this is actually where it's at on the table so we're gonna say even if it's seven inches down from seven inches and seven inches up whatever we're gonna say this is our zero point so you can you can hit uh, X on your wireless controller or you can hit this zero all and okay so you see how it put us there so what we're gonna do is say that this this part here is on the sheet and we're going to uh, and it's sitting on there a little crooked or it may or may not be but for the sake of this we're gonna say it is so very simple all you have to do is this is your plate alignment right here you just hit this do you wanna restore your last plate alignment no we don't so you hit no okay now you see the first LED lit up so that is means that your first point has been saved so let's jog on down here okay we're gonna be there and let's say uh, let's say we got it cocked about that much okay so we're gonna say that is our other other point that's our other corner of this sheet so all you're simply gonna do is hit plate alignment again and boom there you go so your baseline has changed on this and then from this all you have to do is hit A on the wireless controller and uh, you're good to go so you can actually start cutting this out and then after the sheet is done to uh, reset this all you have to do is hit this once and then it'll go back and then say you messed up and you're still on that same corner and you accidentally hit it once this is where you say yes I want to restore that last plate alignment so uh, if you hit it one too many times it's it's uh, it's no big deal so uh, you've got that there so all you have to do after this is hit A which uh, is hotkeyed to this as a cycle start and uh, it's, a, it's actually going to pick the torch up and uh, it's going to jog to this first hole here and it's going to cut it out okay um, you I'm going to go over the settings with you on this as, as well um, this is where all of your height control and all this and then you have what I'm actually looking at and you can't see but I've got the the uh, the user interface is on this side which has your cut height which is uh, is your readout of your uh, of your uh, 
your torch output on there. So usually on this bigger torch like this, I'm about a 170 is my arc height on it. So we've got our pierce counter. This is your actual pierce height. This is your ignition height. These two, these pierce height and ignition height, they go hand in hand. What this does is this is where the torch will start and once it senses that it has uh, that it has hit the material then it's going to go right down to your pierce height it's almost instantaneous but when you're cutting thicker materials as in quarter inch three eighths something that doesn't have a quick pierce on it you want that to be a little higher and it never hurts to have it just a little higher anyways um, keeps uh, keeps the slag out of your out of your torch head uh, pierce height I'm usually at about a .28 on that because I like to pierce just a little higher um, usually as a general rule of thumb they say an eighth inch be between your uh, your tip and material and I really don't like that so I usually run it a little higher than an eighth I like to s be able to uh, be able to see my uh, my arc fairly decently I, d I don't I don't don't get me wrong I don't don't want to get it too long but uh, I like to see it Okay, this is your pierce delay here, and we've got it at a point seven for this quarter, which is going to be plenty. You're probably about a point, uh, point three to be safe on that. So all you have to do to change these is literally just click on them and just hit point three, enter, and then that's all that is. Okay, this is your THC delay, torch height control delay. So what that is is after you pierce and it starts to cut it will maintain this pierce height level for one second and then your height control is going to kick in so you're going to have your torch once it once that one seconds up you'll always notice where your torch is going to level out and you can you can have that to where it levels out with your pierce height or maybe it goes down a little bit um, depending on holes if you're cutting small holes I like to have this torch height uh, the delay on that I like it to be rather high just because on a small hole you want to you want to maintain the uh, the pier site you don't want it jumping up and down a lot on those smaller holes okay um, your jog speed that's just at a hundred percent that doesn't mean that's a hundred inches a minute your reference speed now your reference speed this is something that you always want to leave at 50 and what that is your reference speed is how fast your actual torch head goes down and hits the material if you have this at a hundred your torch head is going to go down and it's actually with this floating head the way that is it's a spring with a limit switch on it so you want that to be fairly slow at this 50 you can maybe raise it up to 60 if you wanted but uh, I have had uh, instances where you put it a hundred and it comes down and it'll actually lift the gantry up off of the off of the track so that's something that you don't want um, this reference speed only comes in whenever like if you were piercing here if it comes way over here and pierces it's gonna reference your sheet so more or less that's that's just your reference your uh, your hide off of your plate okay and uh, this is where you turn on your torch height control and uh, actually before you uh, if I would have had that off and I would have hit cycle start it's gonna prompt me and ask me if I want to turn that on and I'm gonna say yeah so uh, that's uh, that's pretty simple. We do have a rip cut feature in this where you can hit this, and uh, it pretty much is gonna. You're, it's pretty self-explanatory. Rip uh, whatever direction you're wanting to uh, wanting to cut. You just hit that. Put the length and your feed rate. Hit OK, and uh, it's gonna take it from there. And uh, what that'll do, that's gonna have your torch height control on, and uh, it's gonna cut as if it was a G code. Um, now uh, on this there are a few display modes that you can do I usually have as you can see here this is your actual table and this is where we're at on it so uh, that has your uh, your actual uh, jogging out print of, of your tra tables limits on that which is uh, pretty cool so uh, we can go back to that here now uh, now there are a few things right now I don't have the wireless controller plugged in which I can show you but uh, there are a few things on that controller that uh, that we can get into on the next video I'll uh, be having someone record me so we can uh, we can actually go step by step 
through uh, troubleshooting as it happens. Um, as you see, there's a lost cut recovery. And what that is, is if you lose air pressure, sometimes these plasmas, you'll lose air pressure, and uh, it'll lose air pressure, but your G-code will continue to go for, say, an inch or so. And uh, what this lost cut recovery does is the instant that you lose arc, that thing will record that position on that line. So if you're cutting a 10-foot strip, in some, in some uh, other, other tables, you would have to go back to the very first point where you turn that corner at. Because if you're cutting a straight line, it only knows that straight line. It does not have any program points in between. So you'll actually have to jog and stop and, and do all kinds of weird stuff. But with this lost cut recovery, more or less, when it loses arc, it senses it, it goes back, it'll touch down, uh, re-arc, and start cutting again as if nothing ever happened. This, to some people, they won't know the worth of this, but to people that have messed around with these machines for a long time, this is like gold. So uh, I'm going to run through a few diagnostics. This is a screen that you won't hardly ever get into, but it is good to be familiar with it. So uh, this is just, uh, this will have all of your, uh, your switches on this, so like your head switch on your floating torch, you do have a uh, limit switch on there, so you can, if you want to manually make sure that that switch is engaging or if you're having problems or something, this is kind of where you can come and do that. Um, and here is also too, this is your lost arc location, this is where it actually stores it. Um, this is your max and min on your THC. I'm going to leave that because that's six inches, and that's what the travel is on that. Okay. Um, there is your uh, your rapid Z height. Okay. This is uh, this is how high your torch comes up after it finishes a cut. So you can have that come up three inches if you want. You have plenty of clearance. You're going to have about eight inches of clearance um, total from the bed on your uh, on your machine so it's uh it's nice to to set that a little higher um, this one does have a breakaway torch feature but you don't want to use it so uh, if you set that you can even set it at uh, at uh, 2.5 and just hit enter and uh, that'll change that so if you do have some parts or you're cutting some light gauge material that are uh, that are bowing up on you or or raising up on some 16 gauge or aluminum or something like that. I've seen that happen before. So we just set that uh, rapid Z height up and uh, that'll get your torch out of the way so you don't have to worry about it uh, dragging on anything and, and snapping your head or doing any weird stuff like that because you do not want that. Okay, um, let's uh, see what else we have here. Um, on this screen, there's not much. You still have your uh, your buttons where you can cycle, start, feed, hold, do all that. That's something I'll I'll touch on here. Um, this is all of your your. This is kind of like your emergency stop. This is something that you really don't ever want to hit on your user interface over here that you cannot see, but I'm looking at. You have an emergency stop switch. You have a cycle start, and then you have a feed hold button. And you can hit that feed hold button, and you kind of see that and it'll say stop pressed so uh, but uh, you definitely do not want to uh, not unless it is an emergency you do not want to press this emergency stop because what that does is it totally stops everything locks everything completely up so uh, if you're traveling at a thousand inches a minute and you hit this stop it's going to stop at a thousand inches a minute um, it's not good for the table and it does pose the threat of tearing something up on that so uh, you do not want to do that so if you ever have anything you can come hit the space bar which is a feed hold command and uh, you can just keep on tapping that till she stops and it will stop and uh, you do have it on your user interface which is the feed hold which is the red push in button here not the mushroom emergency stop but the regular feed hold button you hit that and uh, that stops everything as well too but it does not emergency stop it that is what you do not want to do so uh, and that's that's a rule in general for any machinery um, the emergency stop switch is not a way to turn something off 
um, it usually does more harm than help so uh, so on that so we've got this part and we're ready to cut all you're gonna have to do is hit cycle start and you're ready to cut um, also too you have your feed rate over here you can turn it up turn it down and that's something on your controller which I'll go over in the next video that you can do wirelessly and uh, you can do pretty much everything that I showed you on here um, you can do that wireless so uh, that'll be in the next video and that'll be how to uh, start up your machine and uh, and uh, get it all get all zeroed out and referenced home so uh, thanks for watching